Speaker, London's two COVID assessment centres are completely overwhelmed. They are seeing the longest lineups in months, with people waiting four hours or more for a test or forced to leave without one. One of the centres is within walking distance of three elementary schools, creating safety and traffic nightmares for children getting to and from school. The Western University Mobile Testing Unit is turning students away because it can't meet the demand. Christine and Sue Zimmer told me their 87-year-old mother, who needs a test in order to get her cancer surgery, was forced to risk exposure to COVID by waiting in line for hours with people who were symptomatic. Speaker, with the second wave upon us, what is this government doing to reduce the risk and make more COVID tests available to Londoners? Premier. I want to thank uh, the member for, for the question. You, you know, Mr. Speaker, I stood up there day after day after day begging people to get tested, and people were coming. We're leading the country in testing. We, we have 38% of the population, 52% of the test. We have well over 3,200,000 tests, Mr. Speaker. What we're doing, it's all hands on deck. We've reached out for help again because we aren't shy to ask for help from the great people, the 14.5 million people and the thousands of businesses. And again, the thousands of businesses are stepping up. Some of the top retailers in the entire country that I've called personally are stepping up and they're going to be doing the testing. And we look forward to making sure that everyone has an opportunity to get tested. I drove by Women's College, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I'm first to acknowledge there, there was lineups, but there was good news in that lineup. The good news is I saw a lot of young people in that lineup because we know the majority of the cases are under 40 years of age and also Response. under 19 years of age. So I'm so proud to see everyone getting there and getting tested, and we're going to have a very efficient system. And the supplementary question. Speaker, an effective and appropriate testing strategy requires more assessment centres, longer hours, more options for testing. Ron Quintillan and his sisters need tests every two weeks to visit their father in long-term care. They worry that lineups for testing mean they won't be able to see their father and are planning to take vacation days in order to wait for the tests. Brenda D'Souza told me that her elderly parents are scheduled to move into a, re a retirement home but may have to delay their move because of long waits for a COVID test. Speaker, with students back to school, with the situation in London is going to get much worse very quickly. Will the Premier commit to providing the resources that London urgently needs to expand our testing capacity and help limit the second wave? Minister of Health to reply. Much speaker. Well, the good news is that more people are going for tests. That's what we ask people to do, people that have symptoms and people that believe they may have been in contact with someone with COVID-19. We are very pleased that they're coming Order. forward, but they also deserve to have time. Stop the clock. Order. Please restart the clock. Minister of Health to reply. Thank you, Speaker. But people also deserve to have timely access to tests, and we recognize that with people going back to work, with people returning to school, people needing to have tests to visit uh, family members in long-term care homes or retirement homes, that we need to have greater access for people. We have expanded our testing capacity and our lab capacity considerably in a very short order to the point that we are now leading in testing across the country with over 3 million tests having been conducted. But we are looking to expand again. We're looking to get to 50,000 tests per day, and we have a fall preparedness plan that is calling for that to happen. We are actively looking at this moment at ways that we can expand Response. access to people, not just in London, but across because we know there are long wait lines in other places, but we're very grateful, first of all, to our hospital partners. Thank you very much. 